Okay, so let's continue our series. So right now what we're going to look is that we're going to look at get command. It is the command that we use to find the commands that we want to run. So let's start with help first. So let's do help get command and we're going to go with full. Now full is going to give me a synopsis, a syntax description, so all of the parameters plus examples. So if we first look here at the syntax, we're going to notice that we have uh, name, which is one of the parameters to differentiate one from the other. Uh, we have also verb and noun. So I can specify a noun or a verb, but I cannot a name, or I can only do name. So this is good information for us to have. Now, if we go over here into the description itself, um, one of the things that we're going to see is that we can actually search for uh, commandlets, functions, workflows, and aliases are installed on the computer. Um, and if we actually do get command asterisk, we get all. Now all the commands are going to be those available to us in our path variable, just like with Linux, with cmd.exe, with most operating system, uh, all of them has have kind of like this path value or path uh, variable that we can actually use for finding other uh, commands. Now this variable is going to dictate the order of execution. One thing that we have to keep in consideration is that with uh, PowerShell version two, we only get those commandlets that get auto loaded into the system or th those commandlets that get loaded at startup either via uh, via profile or just by PowerShell itself. Uh, PowerShell version three, we have auto loading. This variable here, PS module auto loading preference is the one that controls uh, how do we auto load uh, modules inside of PowerShell. Uh, one of the things that we do have to take into, consider into consideration um, is uh, to remember that PowerShell version two behaves different from PowerShell version three. And if we want that behavior to only be uh, those commandlets that were uh, imported by hand, we can just do list imported and it won't auto load modules for us in our session. So do keep that in consideration. Uh, so let's do something now. Let's look, take a look at the arguments. Let's look at the most common arguments um, that we may be using. So let's start first with uh, command type. Command type actually allows me to specify what type of commandlet do I want to pull. So we have aliases, we can get all, I can specify all, which is the same as get command asterisk. We can get applications that are in the system, so not necessarily stuff that is PowerShell. We can also get external scripts. We can also specify scripts and workflows. Um, as you can see, it's not positional, uh, no default value, doesn't accept wildcards. So now let's take a look at module. Now, as we're getting information from multiple commands, one of the things that we're going to notice is that we have commands available for us uh, and modules, we can specify those. Now let's, something that I noticed right now with name, position zero, so that's the asterisk. That's the first thing that gets, but look at this. Um, does it accept all cards? Uh, no. Uh, so this is something to keep in mind with PowerShell. Sometimes they help, at least for wildcards, I find have found it to not be that accurate. Another command uh, parameter that I really, really, really do like is to actually use parameter name. This allows me to uh, look for specific parameters, uh, all commandlets with specific parameters. And sometimes since people don't follow best practices and they put whatever name they want on one, uh, you can also use parameter type to be able to search by specific type of object that I can actually pass that parameter. One thing to remember, these two options are only in PowerShell 3 and above. So if you're running Windows 7 or 2008 R2, you're not going to see these parameters available to you. Now, another one that I really, really like is show command info. I find, I find this one very, very useful. I can look at specific syntax. Uh, parameter sets, uh, how they're defined, um, and I can even look at source code for some stuff. Uh, another one, total count. This is if I'm getting too much, I can limit the list. 
Uh, one thing to do keep in mind if, if you use the syntax parameter, and uh, depending on what you're using, it behaves differently. So for an alias, it will tell you what is actually being called. In the case of a command letter function, you actually get that, uh, that those parameters. In the case of a script or application, we're only going to be getting the path and the file name if we are specifying syntax here. So do be aware of that. Depending on the type, we're going to be getting different info. Now, let's say if I want to get all of the get commandlets or set commandlets, I have verb there. Um, let's look at inputs and outputs. As we can see, I can uh, pipe to this multiple command names. So uh, I can pass kind of like a collection to be able to get information. It's kind of telling me that that any input is going to be for a commandlet. And the outputs, as you can see, will vary depending on the parameters with which I called get command. So another thing that we have to keep in, into consideration. Now let's take a look at the examples. As you can see, it provides quite a large list of examples. Uh, here we have one for list imported, get command on, on its own. We have from type. Now uh, there's a specific one that I want you guys to see. Here we go, uh, example 11. Now, if in our path, if we have a command that repeats itself, we have multiple versions of it. Um, in PowerShell version three, we're only going to be seeing the first one unless we use the dash all parameters. So do, do, do keep this in mind. This is useful to find if somebody's doing an order hijack or if by accident you import a module that has a command like that it's named the same. Um, this way we can force to look at all and we can actually know, hey, this is what's happening. I'm calling this command from this module and not from this other. They have the same name. So having conflicts. So do, do keep that in mind. As we can see, we have even more examples here, but let's look at the environment path so we can look at what is that order of search for commands. As we can see, it looks first in System32, we see Windows, see System32 WebM, uh, PowerShell itself. Now, since this is uh, Windows 10 1809, I have OpenSSH also available here for me. Um, in addition to that, I have the PowerShell version 6 on the system. It's going to look for that. Uh, it's looking to look for my Windows apps. And also, since I have VS Code, we have there. Now, let's look at the um, path for all of the modules. That it, What is the order of search for finding modules? And as I mentioned, modules is the way that PowerShell actually packages commandlets. We can put inside of modules commandlets, functions, aliases um, that get exported, even variables if we want. And those variables then become available to us. So clear. Now let's do get command and let's look for commands that have the word process in its name. So let's do get command process. And we, as you can see, I have here functions, commandlets, um, also applications, so I have quite a nice list of different types. We can get the version information, we can get from, if they came from a path or a module itself. As you can see here for the application, you actually get the path for it. So let's go deeper here and let's look at get process. And for get process, I want to get the show command info. I want to get a bit more information about this command and see what information do I get. I get the name, I get the module. As you can see, I have multiple syntaxes here available to me, different ways that I can actually run this command. Uh, each one with a different combination of parameters, uh, unique parameters. Uh, as you can see, it's telling me it's a commandlet. I get uh, the module name, the module itself, and also have parameter sets. So let's do something. I want to look better at parameter sets. Let's save this into a variable. Let's look at uh, proc info equal get process command, command info. Let's look now at the parameter sets. Now, when I look at the parameter sets, as you can see, I have here uh, the name of the parameter set. So I have name, name with username, ID with username, ID, input object with username, input object. And if we look at the parameter sets above, 
one of the things that we're going to notice is that all of them have uh, kind of like include username. So I can either call one with username or without username if I specify a name, an ID, or an object itself. So this information becomes very useful to understand the syntaxes and the logic that the programmer used when they code, coded this. Now let's do something. Let's uh, let's get all uh, that list of processes again. And let's grab a function and let's get show command info for a function so you guys can see how it behaves differently uh, from a commandlet when we get the information. Let's select and copy. Let's paste it here. Uh, get process and show command info. And as you can see, I actually get the source code. Now, this is very useful because it means I don't have to look for where does this module is actually located under which one of those folders, which is the file that contains the function that I want. And then I have to open all of that stuff in Visual Studio Code and have a bunch of, stat, of tabs just to find it where, where would show command info. I can just go and drill down directly and just get that source code so I know how uh, that function is actually working. So let's do something. Let's get all the commands and let's specify the types, all of the commandlets. Um, let's do uh, applications. Let's do uh, functions. As you can see, we're starting to kind of drill down into specific commandlets, uh, into specific stuff that we may want. Uh, now let's go a bit deeper and let's go parameter name. And I want to get all of the ones that actually take a computer name so I can connect to another computer. This is kind of like a standard commandlet. As we can see, we have two of these guys that actually accept a computer name. Um, so let's do something different. Now we have identified this commandlet that we can run remotely against another system. Let's look for credentials. Uh, PS cred no, PS credentials is the type. I want credentials itself. Uh, oh, forgot, it's singular credential. So here we can see we have a series of commandlets here. So now we have a series of commands here that we know that take computer name. They also take credentials. So this is uh, useful for us. This means that we can actually connect remotely to the systems and, and we have drilled it down to specifically two commands. So now let's get um, all of the commandlets that I forget that we can pull information and where the parameter name or parameter type, sorry, is PS credentials. So I can actually specify cred alternate credentials either to change the context under which I'm running the command or just to connect. As we can see, we have quite a large amount of uh, commandlets here that actually take credentials. Get to when my object pops uh, over immediately to me. We even have for getting AS, uh, uh, ACLs uh, service from space. So let's do help on get command. I want to look at this command specifically for uh, specifying parameters, uh, parameter names. So let's uh, for parameter types, sorry. So when we look at parameter types, uh, as you can see, I can specify multiple parameter types. As we can see, this uh, parameter is brand new to PowerShell version three. So we can specify multiple of those. Uh, now let's also look at uh, the data for the parameter name one. And as we can see, it also takes multiples. It's also new in PowerShell version three. Now, one thing to do keep in mind is that when you provide multiple parameters, uh, multiple values, uh, they uh, they behave like an or, not an and. 
So you will have a mixture uh, there of parameters that only take credentials or only take um, computer name. So let's take a look at getting all of those that have computer name and credentials. As we can see, um, we can use this to explore and find command lists of interest for us, especially as security professionals, since we're always working with other um, systems on the network. Uh, get event log, huh? Get hot fix. Um, let's see something. Let's get the help for copy item, which was one mentioned. And as you can see here, we can see that it takes credential, but not computer name. So as I, as I mentioned, do be careful. It actually behaves like uh, or. Now, I hope that you guys have found all of this information useful. Remember, if you like the videos, uh, give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe. And if you have any ideas or anything that you would like to see in the future, just put in a comment. Thanks.